Well, good morning once again, Mount Gilead. It is great to be back with you again. Here we are. It's another week down, and it's a Friday, TGIF once again. And uh, it's just great to be back with you today. This is uh, one of the highlights of my week, is being able to share with you uh, via this uh, mode of communication. And so just uh, uh, glad we can do this again today. This morning, I want to talk about secrets. Paul, the Apostle Paul, had a secret. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, uh, he writes, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret. There it is. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Somehow, in the midst of Paul's chaotic life, he was able to find peace, contentment, and joy. In recovery, there's a word that we use to describe that combination of peace, contentment, and joy, and that word is serenity. In fact, I shared some of this with our addiction support group this past Monday night. And by the way, shameless plug for anybody that may be struggling with substance abuse or addiction of any, of any kind, or if you're a loved one, if somebody who's battling some sort of addiction, um, Monday night at 7 o'clock, we're meeting at Mount Gilead Church. We've been meeting on Zoom this coming Monday night. We're actually meeting at the church building once again. We're thankful for that, and that's at 7 o'clock. We'd love to see you there. But I want to share just briefly what I shared with my group uh, Monday night, that if you want serenity, if you want that peace that comes uh, through faith, peace that passes all understanding, here are four ways to get it. Uh, number one, it starts with acceptance. Serenity begins when we learn to distinguish between those things that I can change and those things that I cannot. Now, I want to say that again. Serenity begins when we learn to distinguish between the things that, I, that we can change and the things that we cannot change. When we admit that there are people and places and things and events and circumstances and situations over which we are totally powerless those things then begin to lose their power over us. Uh, one of the things we learn in recovery is, is that everybody has their own right to make their own mistakes and to learn from them without any interference or assistance from anybody else. That's why um, in the long run, it's, it's actually okay that when a child defies their parents and puts their hand on a warm stove and, and feels a, a little burn, that can be a helpful thing long-term, right? Um, or, or when a child defies mom and dad and, and runs down a, a rocky road, even though mom and dad say, slow down, and, and, and the, the child falls down and scrapes their knee, that can be an okay thing. We learn from those painful choices, from those painful experiences. The key to serenity is acceptance. Now, acceptance doesn't mean I have to like it. I don't have to like watching somebody suffer or go through a painful experience. It doesn't mean I have to like it or condone it. it. doesn't even mean I have to ignore it. What it does mean is that I am powerless to do anything about it. And I've got to accept that fact. Number two is wisdom. If we want that peace, it means uh, longing and looking for Wisdom. One of the reasons we meet together in person as a church is to share our collective wisdom. And even though we, we value truth and we uphold truth, we love truth, church isn't just about gaining more truth. It's not just downloading information in our brains. No, we need more than that. We need each other, the, the collective wisdom and the life experience that we share with one another. And sometimes it's just the little things. Sometimes we, we go to a small group or we listen to a sermon or sing a song and, and, and we gain just a little bit of wisdom, a little takeaway from, from the day. But after a while, all those small bits of knowledge and understanding add up to a big mountain, a mountain that helps us learn how to deal with life and how to look at ourselves. Acceptance, wisdom. Number three is courage. Courage. Sometimes the only thing that we can change about a problem that we're experiencing is our attitude about the problem. 
Now I wanna say that again. Sometimes the only thing that we can change about the problem is our attitude about the problem. That's another thing we learn in recovery. There's really only two things that we have control over in there, our own attitudes and our own actions. The scriptures actually encourage us to take a look in the mirror, to, to, to look at ourselves and, and to really discover and dig deep to find the part that we play in the problems that we're experiencing. And when we do that, and when we do it honestly and courageously, we come to this conclusion that, you know what, there might be some things that we need to change about ourselves. When I'm facing a problem in my life, there might be something that I need to change about me in order to help fix the problem. And that change often requires courage. So acceptance, wisdom, courage, and the last thing would be hope. If we want peace and serenity, it means we chase after hope and we look for hope. Look, recovering from the effects of a fallen, messed up world is a process. It's not a one-time event. We don't get into the problems we face in life overnight and we can't accept to recover from them overnight either. But one of the things that helps along the way is remembering our hope remembering that there's a bigger story being written, remembering that our faith leads to hope. Acceptance, wisdom, courage, hope, the four keys to living a life of serenity and discovering that same secret that Paul discovered 2,000 years ago. I hope that encourages you. I hope that maybe even challenges you, gives you something to chew on today. I hope you have a great weekend and look forward to seeing you 10 a.m. this Sunday morning, mgchurch.live. I'll see you there.